All right, so now we're going to talk about the uh, inverse tangent function, uh, its derivative. So here, d dx of uh, inverse tangent of x equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's also uh, pretty interesting, I think, um, you know, derivative of this inverse trig function, and you get just this uh, nice kind of rational function here. Um, no square roots, nothing like that. It's, uh, it's just really interesting. Um, but anyway, let's see why this is true. So we're going to have to go about this the same way we did the inverse sign. Uh, unfortunately, and um, we're going to have to worry about some technical details again, but it won't really be that bad. Um, maybe. Let's see. So let's start by saying uh, y equals inverse tangent of x. All right. So right away that just means that uh, x equals tangent uh, of y. Okay. So um, if we say x equals tangent of y, then that, let's zoom in a little bit here then that means uh, dx dy, <clears throat> okay, in other words, the derivative of x with respect to y equals the uh, derivative of this guy is going to be secant squared of y, right? So this is a secant squared of y, okay, because the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and here uh, we have x equals a function of y instead of the other way around. So now we're going to use this uh, and the inverse function theorem, uh, and we're going to say, okay, so dy dx equals 1 over uh, dx dy and uh, that's 1 over secant squared of y All right. and uh, 1 over secant squared is actually just cosine squared of y okay. 1 over secant squared is cosine squared uh, and our variable is y here okay so now uh, we gotta figure out alright how do we express this in terms of just x because here it's dy dx right y is a function of x so we want our answer to be just in terms of x so we gotta figure out alright how do we get rid of that well uh, just like before when we did the inverse sine function we have to come over here and worry about the range of the uh, inverse tangent function alright so um, how are we going to do that? Uh, so remember, the reason we have to do that is because uh, y equals inverse tangent of x. So this y and this y are the same thing here. Okay. So uh, because of this y comes from here, we have to worry about you know what kind of values can this y have, and then uh, you know depending on those values, you know different things might happen, or they might not. We have to figure it out. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so uh, the range. of uh, inverse tangent of x is uh, negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2 but with uh, round parentheses okay so um, so this means negative pi over 2 is strictly less than y is strictly less than pi over 2 so not equal to right not equal to Okay, so y can't be equal to pi over 2, and it can't be equal to negative pi over 2. Uh, the reason is, you know, if you try to tangent of pi over 2, that's sine of pi over 2 over cosine of pi over 2, which is 1 divided by 0, and that's totally not allowed, right? So uh, the range of the inverse tangent function is defined to be this interval here. So again, um, this is actually going to be just like with the inverse sine function. Um, the only difference is, you know, with the inverse sine function, we had less than or equal to, right? Um, but... Uh, the fact that we now have strictly less than and strictly less than actually doesn't really change much of anything. Um, so we're still going to come up here and we're going to uh, look at some triangles and quadrants. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis, but let's not label them just so uh, we don't want to have too many x's and y's flying around all over the place here. Um, so in the first quadrant, but again, uh, negative pi over 2 is less than y is less than pi over 2, right? And we want to figure out what's cosine squared of y. So if y is between these two guys here, then that means y is in quadrant 4 or in quadrant 1, because here's angle 0 on the positive x-axis, here's negative pi over 2, here's positive pi over 2, so y is somewhere in here, right? Somewhere in quadrant 4 or in quadrant 1. And which one is it? We don't know, so that's why we have to examine both uh, cases. So let's go ahead and uh, examine both cases, and um, what's going to happen uh, up here in quadrant one, we've got this triangle, all right, uh, and then this angle here would be y in that case, so this is y, 
And uh, in quadrant four, we've got this triangle here, kind of sort of something like that. Uh, and if y is in quadrant four, it's going to be a negative angle down here like that. Okay, so uh, right triangle, right triangle. Um, all right, so now we got to figure out what's the cosine squared of y. And in order to do that, we have to know uh, something else about y. Do we know something else about y? Yes, we do, luckily. Uh, we know that y equals the inverse tangent of x, or in other words, uh, x equals tangent of y. So let's come over here and write that. Um, tangent of y equals x. And uh, that's the same thing as saying x over 1, right? And remember, tangent is uh, opposite over adjacent. So tangent of y is opposite over adjacent. So uh, we can say, so let's go ahead and look at the triangle on top first. So opposite's going to be x, and adjacent's going to be 1. Okay, so this uh, bottom side here is going to be 1. How about the bottom triangle? Same thing, actually, right? Tangent of y, so we still have this rule here. Okay, this is just true in general. It comes from here. So now we're, if we're in the fourth quadrant, then the opposite side is going to be this guy here. Okay, opposite over adjacent is x over 1. And then the adjacent is going to be this side here, the same side. So um, luckily, again, uh, just like with the inverse sine function, now with the inverse tangent function, the same kind of thing is going to happen, it looks like. So uh, what's, this, uh, what's this hypotenuse here? Well, uh, let's call this b, all right? And uh, because this is x, this is 1. Uh, so we're going to call that b. This is also x. This is also 1. So this is uh, this hypotenuse is actually going to be the same thing, also b. All right. So if we go to the Pythagorean theorem, then we know that uh, b squared equals okay b squared equals 1 squared plus x squared uh, equals 1 squared plus x squared, and uh, 1 squared is just 1, right? So then b is going to be uh, the square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, is it the positive root or the negative root? Well, uh, because it's the hypotenuse, it has to be the positive root. Um, it's got to be the positive root. But as we're about to see, it's actually not going to matter. Right? Why is it not going to matter? Um, well, here, cosine squared of y, uh, what's that? Let's go ahead and rewrite that like this. So we're actually now ready to uh, answer the question, uh, what is that? So cosine of y squared. Right? So cosine squared of y, that's just a shorthand way of writing this. right? Um, so what's the cosine of y? Cosine of y is adjacent over hypotenuse. What's adjacent over hypotenuse? Well, in the upper triangle, it's 1 over b. In the lower triangle, it's also 1 over b. So that's great. Uh, the same thing happens to both triangles. So it's going to be 1 over b uh, quantity squared. All right, that's what cosine squared of y is. Um, it's kind of messy here. But then coming down here, um, 1 over b quantity squared, that's the same thing as 1 squared over b squared. All right, um, 1 squared is just 1. What's b squared? Well, that's here. That's just 1 plus x squared. So this equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. All right. And uh, remember, this uh, came all the way from here. dy dx equals 1 over dx dy equals 1 over secant squared of y equals cosine squared of y is the same thing as writing cosine of y quantity squared. Uh, from our triangles here, we found out that y is, uh, or sorry, cosine of y is 1 over b. So 1 over b quantity squared is just 1 over b squared b squared is 1 plus x squared, so we uh, end up with this. And that's a proof, um, kind of a proof uh, of the derivative formula for the inverse tangent function. So again, there are some subtle details here um, to worry about, uh, and it is kind of a headache, but uh, otherwise pretty straightforward, just a matter of remembering some trig also. So that's that.